I believe that the outpouring of the Holy Spirit that is coming upon America right now is going to target two people, two kinds of people at the same time. One is the frustrated Christian and the other is the lost soul. And in order for you to understand how these two are going to collide, I've got to tell you a story very quickly. And I got to move fast because I wanted to feed you tonight. I didn't want to just give you a snack. So look, David lost everything. First Samuel 30, Ziglag had been burned to the ground. They kidnapped his family. His men thought of killing him because all of their families likewise had been left unprotected and they were lost. And David did something that is so astonishing. In the midst of the most uh, profound discouragement of his life, it says David encouraged himself in the Lord. Now look, put your hand over your heart and listen to me. I want every one of you to do this right now. Say, Lord, encourage my heart right now. Encourage me in the fire of God. Restore me to my first love. Let me live like I did when I walked by faith and not by sight. Let me go back to the first love, the first fire that I've known in my life. If you believe God's doing that for you, clap your hands right there. David did the most astonishing thing that any leader I can imagine. He encouraged himself in the Lord. And instead of saying, God, why did you let this happen? He said, shall I pursue them or not? Everyone in this room, you don't need to waste your energy and your strength on why someone so precious suddenly died in your life. Why you lost someone that you needed. Why sickness came from out of nowhere. Why did this happen? You know, if I knew that God would answer me and tell me, I'd ask him in a million, in a, in a moment. But I know that there's something that David understood. I've got to keep moving forward out of tragedy, out of my doubt, out of my fear. Even when I don't know how I can get one foot to move in front of the other, I need to keep moving forward. There's pastors in this room about to quit. There's pastors watching me about to quit. There's businesses about to go under. We just had this astonishing financial reversal in America. And the voice is going out. And the people of God are wondering, what's going to happen to my money? What's going to happen to my children? And this is where you've got to do what David said. Look, God, I don't need you to explain this to me. I don't even need you to change my feelings. I need you to give me direction. And whatever you tell me to do, I'm going to do it. Because whatever God tells me to do, it's going to defeat my enemy. It's going to protect my children. It's going to bring what I need. It's going to do what I need in my life. You need to look at the devil and say, I don't go by the Wall Street. My economy is not based on the stock market. It's based on the kingdom of God. I know in whom I have believed. And I am persuaded that he's able to keep what I've committed against that day. And look, David got on his horse. What an amazing moment. David jumps on his horse and says, charge. The men are holding rocks. But you know what it was? It's a reflex. It's called muscle memory. What it is, is that every time that David had ever said, we're going to go into battle, they won. Every time David had that look in his eye that he had heard from God, they knew they were going to win. It didn't matter what it looked like it didn't matter suddenly the ashes of the burnt village didn't matter suddenly the loss of their family didn't matter what mattered is our leader our master our captain has said we're going into battle right now and we're going to bring back our kids So how did he do it? He didn't know what direction to go in. He just started out. 
He's on his horse. He's going, I faked him out pretty good. But God, you better give me coordinates real fast. Because they'll be on to me any second. And he rode as far as he could. He had no direction. He had no tracks to follow. He had nothing. He was riding on instinct. When he saw something move off in the distance, turned his horse and went after her. he said I don't care what it is I'm going over there and he was an Egyptian slave who had been left to die here is the most ironic moment the two people that I'm targeting under this tent tonight are the frustrated wounded believer and those who are in this tent that don't know Christ who are hopeless. The Egyptian was left for dead. He made the mistake of working for the Amalekites who if you ever got physically sick they treated you like an animal and left you because they couldn't afford to carry you if you're sick. So there he is starving to death and David looked at him and here is the, iron the ironic moment. This is like a movie. Here is the future king of Israel who has lost everything, confronting the slave who is about to die. And they form a partnership. For three days he feeds them. They're wondering why is he taking so much time with this slave when we have our families to consider because David understood something. There are churches that don't want people with tattoos and body odor and teeth missing that have come out of the ravages of sin. They don't want them in their church. Pastor, why are you going down to the ghetto to get those people? Let, in fact, what we need to do is build a special place to put them so they won't be around our people. Is anybody here? See, once again, you're going to think I'm doing a commercial for Canyon Hills, and in kind of am. But they showed me the most beautiful video of a stripper from right here in this club that had been one to Jesus. <laughs> and man, and she's talking about the love. The love that she felt. But you know what? Canyon Hills needed that stripper as much as she needed them. There's something about us dealing with lost souls that freshens our Christianity. It makes us. Somebody help me right now. God gave me this sermon this afternoon and it broke me. David looked at that Egyptian, he said, son, you are wounded, you are dying, you are, you're needing food and oil poured in your wounds. But don't you think for one moment that I feel like a hero while I'm doing this because I need you every bit as much as you need me. You better say an amen. I'm going to go out there if I don't get an amen.